Let's talk about the exploitation of scientific research for media sensational headlines. The relationship between scientific research and media headlines has been a topic of concern in recent years. While scientific studies play a crucial role in advancing our understanding of the world, their representation in the media often falls victim to sensationalism and cherry-picking. As I've tried to research and explore recent research papers, journals, and articles to the best of my ability and remain as true to them as possible, with this essay, I aim to investigate the expectation of scientific research for media headlines and consequences it has on public perception and trust in scientific findings. One of the key issues lies in the inaccurate representation of research results in the media. Studies have shown that a significant portion of scientific news articles misinterpret or exaggerate research findings, ending up in misleading headlines and sensationalized stories. This discrepancy between the original scientific article and its representation in the media can have detrimental effects on the public understanding and trust in scientific information. For example, let's look at this first case study. Published in March 2022 in the Journal of Science Communication, a study sought to investigate in detail the communication process in a well-known case of significant misrepresentation of scientific research in news media. It focused on a journal article published in the New England Journal of Medicine in August 2017, titled NAD Deficiency, Congenital Malformation and Nicid Supplementation, and the press release published by the researcher's institution itself, entitled Historic discovery has the potential to prevent miscarriages and birth defects globally. This is what was published by Victor Chen Cardia of Research Institute in 2017. Only by comparing the title, you can already see how palatable the press release is trying to be to the largest amount of media outlet possible in order to be published. The journal article described a study that investigated the role of gene variation and nicene supplementation in the prevention of congenital malformation. While a major component of the study design was investigating the effect of niacin supplementation in mice, many news media reports implied the research had been undertaken in humans with direct health implication for women during pregnancy. A total of 60 unique news reports were identified from 48 separate news organizations and websites. The news sources included well-known organizations such as the BBC or ABC in Australia, as well as lesser-known technology-focused and health-related websites such as Gizmodo and Body and Soul. The study revealed that the press release contained sensationalism itself, which was reflected in a significant portion of the news reporting through the use of reporting techniques such as spin, buzzwords, and positive framing. The news report also misrepresented the study information by providing incomplete descriptions of the study design and the study populations which was translated from the press release. Moreover, the news report featured potentially harmful clinical recommendations that were present in the press release, such as unrealistic extrapolation of findings from mice to human, a lack of discussion around the limitation of the research, and a lack of further advice to consult a doctor for additional information. Research has highlighted the prevalence of inaccuracies in media reports on scientific research. For example, a study found that nearly half the scientific studies reported in the news contained exaggerated claims or misinterpretation of the research findings, according to Vox in 2017. The distortion of information can create a skewed perception of scientific knowledge among the public, leading to misunderstandings and false beliefs. Timothy Caulfield coined the term science exploitation, used mainly to point out where newsworthy scientific advances are exploited by marketers with unproven claims. The terms is also used by Professor Caulfield to debunk some of the most pernicious falsehood and explore the cultural forces driving the rise and spread of health misinformation, including celebrity culture, social media, predatory journals, and the spinning of real science and science language. Confirmation bias, a cognitive bias where individuals seek out and interpret information that confirms their pre-existing beliefs also contribute to the exploitation of scientific research for media headlines. Spoiler alert, my very own experience, background and bias also informed and affected heavily how I researched, edited and presented the findings in this essay. Now, 
back to what I was saying, media outlets often selectively report on studies that align with their own agendas and ideologies, ignoring contradictory evidence. This cherry picking of research finding distorts the overall scientific landscape and can lead to misinformation and public confusion. The impact of confirmation bias on media reporting can be seen in various domains, including climate change and vaccination. Studies have shown that media coverage on these topics often favor studies that support the dominant narrative while downplaying or ignoring studies that present different perspective, according to McGill Office of Science and Society in 2020. This biased reporting can perpetuate misinformation and hinder informed public discourse. The era of COVID-19 has further highlighted the exploitation of scientific research for media sensationalism. As the pandemic unfolded, headlines often focused on single studies or preliminary finding without providing the necessary context or acknowledging the ongoing nature of these scientific inquiries. The breaking news effect can create a sense of urgency and alarm, potentially misleading the public and undermining trust in scientific expertise. The quality of media reports on scientific discoveries related to human genetic diseases is another area of concern. Research findings in this field are often complex and nuanced, requiring careful interpretation and contextualization. However, media headlines may oversimplify and misrepresent these findings, leading to a distorted understanding of the science and potentially causing unnecessary anxiety or false hopes among the public. The exploitation of scientific research for media headlines has wide-ranging implications. It can erode public trust in scientific institutions and the scientific method itself. When research findings are sensationalized or misrepresented, it becomes challenging for the public to distinguish between reliable information and pseudoscience. This can have consequences for public health, policy decisions, and societal well-being. There is definitely fallout from misunderstanding science. According to Dr. Ruth Etzioni, she is a biostatistician with Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. Policymakers who have to evaluate the evidence and find the truth in all of this noise may push for the wrong policies. It is that serious. The consequences of sensationalized reporting on scientific research are evident in various contexts. For instance, inaccurate media coverage on vaccines has contributed to vaccine hesitancy and outbreaks of preventable diseases, according to Vox in 2017. Similarly, misleading reporting on climate change has hindered public understanding and delayed necessary action to mitigate its effect. This example demonstrates the real-world impact of media sensationalism on public perception and behavior. Here are different tools that we can use to curb those inaccuracies within the media when it comes to research misrepresentation. Several steps can be taken. Number one, science literacy. Promote science literacy. Educating the public about the scientific process, including how research studies are conducted, how to interpret scientific findings, can help individuals better understand and critically evaluate media reports. Number two, improve science communication. Scientists can play a crucial role in effectively communicating their research to the media and the public. They should strive to present their findings accurately and provide context to avoid misinterpretation. A 2014 research paper for BMG, the prestigious weekly peer-reviewed medical journal published by the British Medical Association, entitled The Association Between Exaggeration in Health, Science News, and Academic Press Releases, a Retrospective Observational Study. It was found that much of the exaggeration in media mainstream coverage of health research, statement that went beyond findings in the academic paper, was already present in the press release sent out to journalists by the academic institution itself, as we pointed earlier. They studied a sample of 462 press releases on biomedical and health-related science issued by 20 leading UK universities in 2011, alongside their associated peer-reviewed research paper and 668 news stories. As a result, 40% of the press releases contain exaggerated advice, 33% contain exaggerated causal claim, and 36% contain exaggerated interference to human from animal research. When press releases contain such exaggeration, the news stories respectively also contain similar exaggeration. 
compared with exaggeration much lower in use when the press releases were not exaggerated themselves. And this is a huge difference. At the same time, there was little evidence that exaggeration in press releases increased the uptake of news, meaning it seems like they didn't even need to do all that. But other from the fact that it was not ethical, it appears not to be effective. The researcher concluded that exaggeration in news is strongly associated with exaggeration in press releases. Improving the accuracy of academic press releases could represent a key opportunity for reducing misleading health-related news. And that is so important to me. As much as we chastise the media and the crazy landscape we have to navigate today, fake news, partisanship, cherry picking, cognitive bias, we also have to be aware of the whole chain of command. Press releases are the lifeline and primary sources for journalists and they trust academia and institution to provide relevant information, probably more than anyone else. We do too. They have to do better internally to find the right formula to stay accurate first and foremost, and then appealing to the media and general public as well. And then of course, we have to enhance journalistic standards. Journalists should adhere to rigorous reporting standards and fact check information before publishing. It's a given. They should seek input from multiple experts and consult primary sources to ensure accurate representation of research. It seems obvious, but apparently not so much. A 2014 peer-reviewed study compared study characteristic of 75 clinically oriented journal articles that received coverage in the top five newspapers by circulation against 75 clinically oriented journal articles that appear in the top five medical journals by impact factor over a similar time span. In doing so, they wanted to compare the journal articles that the newspaper covered against a sample of journal articles from medical journals that could have received media attention. Check this. Newspaper were more likely to cover observational studies and less likely to cover randomized controlled trials than high impact journals. Additionally, when the media does cover observational studies, they select articles of inferior quality. Newspapers preferentially cover medical research with weaker methodology. Long story short, the media did not tend to choose the most solid research to public, and this is just not acceptable. Then we have to avoid sensationalism and simplification. Media outlets should definitely avoid sensationalizing research findings or oversimplifying complex scientific concepts. Instead, they should strive to provide balance and nuanced coverage that accurately reflect the scientific evidence. Then encourage transparency and openness. Researchers should make their findings accessible to the public by publishing their work in reputable scientific journal or preprint platform. Open access to research allows for scrutiny and can help prevent misinterpretation. I feel incredibly privileged to have had access to all of these free resources, journal articles and research paper all mentioned in this essay. And so far, in all of my essays, transparency fosters trust, critical thinking, crowdsourcing, and collaborative effort to move forward in the name of science and common interests. We should all promote collaboration. Encouraging collaboration between scientists and journalists can facilitate accurate reporting. Scientists can provide expert insight and clarify research findings while journalists can ensure that scientific information is communicated clearly and responsibly in a very unbiased way. Then fact-checking and peer review. Media organizations should prioritize fact-checking and verification of research claims before publishing. Consulting with experts and utilizing peer-reviewed studies can help ensure accuracy. Another one of my key points is hold media researchers and their respective institutions accountable. Public scrutiny and holding all involved individuals and organizations accountable for misrepresentation can help discourage inaccuracies. Engaging in public discussion and raising awareness about research misrepresentation can promote responsible journalism. While most of these measures seem very basic and straightforward and obvious, you will be surprised. By implementing them and tracking effectively, we can strive to improve the accuracy and responsible representation of scientific research in the media, fostering a better informed society and promoting trust in scientific findings. In conclusion, the exploitation of scientific research for media headlines and sensationalism is a pressing issue that warrants all of our attention. The inaccurate representation of research results, confirmation bias, and the breaking news effect 
all contribute to the distortion of scientific information in the media to the general public. To mitigate this problem, it is crucial for scientists, journalists, and the public to critically evaluate, scrutinize media reports on scientific research. Additionally, fostering better communication and collaboration between scientists and journalists can help ensure accurate and responsible portrayal of scientific findings in the media. By addressing this issue, we can promote a more informed and scientifically literate society. If you enjoyed this video, I am so grateful you stuck around and will be delighted to read a comment from you. You can of course like and subscribe. The entire list of articles, research papers, and references is available in the bibliography linked in the description below, as well as other key details you might like to get access to. See you very soon in another essay as we continue to decipher media impact and strategies together.